Yes, my friends, it is truly a new world with Armored Warfare. This is not your grandmother's world of tanks any longer. We have got high-tech systems in this game, including guided missiles, which have proven the bane of many who have attempted to hit something with it. And it's been uh, fun for me to learn about something new, so I developed the Musashi's Guide to Guided Missiles because I need to learn myself what in the world was going on. Welcome aboard to another episode of Let's Play Armored Warfare. My name is Musashi. Thank you for joining again. This video was spurred on by my last video on the BMD-1, where I was using the missile for the first time. So right off the bat, let's get the apology out of the way. Obsidian, I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> the video I was... I was saying, I was counting how many Mississippis it took my uh, took my missile to get to the target. And it was like four and a half Mississippi for about 400 meters. And the apology is because Obsidian has done an, an amazing job of getting the missile to behave properly. Uh, at least based on their own stats. They've got the AT-3 A and B missiles that the B, uh, BMD-1 comes with at 100 meters per second. And 400 meters at 100 meters a second would be for Mississippi. So their stats listed for the missile velocity and the actual in-game treatment of it seems to be dead on. So it is taking no shorter or no longer than it's supposed to. Conspiracy over. <laughs> it's just, I didn't understand that these things are famous for flying really slow. And then later in the video, someone hit me with a missile, and I only got like a second and a half, or one and a half Mississippi. Uh, and then I had someone in the, on one of my videos had commented that what they were doing, of course, was aiming the missile above me or somewhere other than directly on me and then guiding it down onto me. And so the warning did not actually appear until I had been targeted at sort of the bitter end. Which, of course, is exactly the thing you ought to be doing with these so that you don't give the enemy that much uh, warning time. You know, three to eight seconds or however long the distance is between you and the enemy. So kudos to that player for plopping me with that missile with a limited uh, warning time. You know, I said earlier in the video, too, that I use that warning system that pops up on your screen that you're being targeted by the missile as sort of an aerial, de aerial denial tool or it'll scare people. But if you actually want to hit somebody, then of course you want to give them the least amount of notice possible. And so, as the player did to me, no doubt, what you really want to do here from a game tip wise, at least with the BMD-1's missiles, is don't fire the thing while not looking at the vehicle directly and then at the very end sort of guide it down on. And that, of course, is where the skill comes in and practice. And we'll look at all that here. This video is going to start having a, a lot of an acronyms and military jargon. And I apologize up front for that. But don't let it let your eyes gloss over. I promise it will all make sense to you. And once you get used to it, you get used to saying the non-K111 man-portable AT-3 Sagar missile. What is a 9K11? That's just, that's just the version of it that a guy straps on his back. All these nomenclature really aren't that complicated once you get learning which one does what. Also, let us not forget, this is early access. Many of the modules and many of the features are either in placeholder status or they're already being worked on. They've already told us, you know, it's early access. It's still the first week. So when I'm about to say this, keep that in mind. The BMD-1 has got the wrong missile launcher on top of the vehicle. Now, again, it's amazing to me that they've got the, the behavior of the missiles so accurate uh, in the gameplay, as well as the models are just gorgeous. But as you're looking at the BMD-1 here on the screen, see that missile launcher on top of there? That is not the one that fires the HEG-3 A or B. So what we have here in the game is the 9P-135M launcher. That's the launcher that uh, utilizes the AT-4 spigot rounds, AT-4... AT-4B, AT-4C, and AT-5 spandrels. Uh, let me say a word about that real quickly. The AT-3 and AT-4 and AT-5, that AT is in a, a U.S. designation. The Soviets, or then Russians, then called it, or actually had their own nomenclature. So the 
AT3A is the 9M14, the AT3B is the 9M14M, and so forth. The, the, the AT4 spigot is the 9M111, and it just goes on like this. So the, there, if you get confused about the nomenclature, it's because you've got the Soviet or Russian version, and you've got the U.S. thing, that's calling the same thing two different, two different things. The launcher that actually works with the AT-3A and AT-3B SAGR missiles that we use here on the BND-1 in the game currently is the 9S-428. That's the one with the rails on it. You know, you always see that little baby or stubby missile on the rails right directly on top of the gun, not offset like this uh, uh, 9P-135M launcher is. Now there is a BMD-1 with this launcher for the AT-4 and AT-5 series on it, and that is the BMD-1P, P like papa. P was a modernization program for the BMD-1 series that in large part included adding on that better launcher to be able to take the better missiles. Right, so I, I didn't know much about this stuff, so I've been spending a lot of time researching it. I actually have a degree in history, that's what my academic training was in, so I like looking this stuff up uh, and I did all the research to find out about all these missiles since I didn't know much about it at all and then I go into the forums under the AFV section for early access and there was a, a, a guy in there is BECZL Begzel from Hungary he had already posted about the fact that this was not the BMD-1 it was the BMD-1P and the launcher was wrong and I'm hardly a foremost expert in Soviet military hardware but it was nice to see uh, through his post that I was on the right track there. You can tell it's the BMD-1P based on this photo here. Uh, look familiar? Does it look like our tank in the game? Of course it does. It looks exactly like it. It's got the same launcher. It's got the shovel. I actually really like the shovel. It's, an, it's another story I'll save for another video about the shovel. Okay, now here we see the actual AT-3 a or B, I don't know which, but you see it's uh, just sort of an exposed missile. It's not in a tube. It's just launched from the little rail that you see there. So this is the one that we're purportedly given uh, based on the modules that we see when we load the thing, even though we have the, the launcher that, that couldn't actually accommodate these type of missiles. And now it's time for another one of Musashi's little war stories. When I was in the Gulf War, I was in a, in a mainline tank unit, it was in an M1A1 Heavy. I fought on the Battle of Medina Ridge and uh, Al Basaya. And I was in 1st Armored Division, so you can Google all that. Medina Ridge was sort of the big deal. But at Medina Ridge, and just prior to getting up there, I only had two really close calls, at least close calls that I knew about, because people that are targeting you, of course, aircraft, you have no idea what might get you. But I visibly saw two things that were real close calls. One of them was an arty strike that was quite close to our tanks. Later when we were up on Medina Ridge, we were just all lined up in a row. I mean, just, you should have seen it. It was amazing. All the M1s were all just really lined up in a row. We are pretty close to each tank in my platoon. I, mean, I don't know what the distance between our tanks was. I don't exactly remember. But I mean, it was close. 15 meters, 20 meters, 50 meters. I mean, it was, it was as tanking terms go, we were just lined up uh, going across that ridge. And one of the other close calls I had was I had one of these wire guided missiles fired at me. I know because I was again I was the driver in the tank during all this, and you're looking out the periscope, and I could I can remember like it was yesterday. You can see that missile coming at you, or at least I could, you, and it was like watching a bad movie because it really was coming in what seemed to me at the time sort of slow motion, and you could actually see the wires behind it, you know, and it was making a slightly erratic path. And my tank commander at the time said, you know, driver, turn left. I mean, he was saying something. I mean, he was, you know, he was obviously trying to get out of the path of the missile. I don't know if it was directly aimed at us or the tank right next to us or, or what the deal was. But I definitely remember thinking it was coming right at us. I mean, I remember looking at it and seeing it uh, and, and always remembering that was one of my quote unquote close calls. Now, I don't know what would happen if it had hit us. My, my tank never took any actual direct fire. We ran over a bunch of mines these little mines they had, and we also ran over a lot of ordnance that our friendly aircraft had, had uh, dropped and hadn't exploded. So there were some other hazards, including burning oil wells and chemical. Ah, that's another story. But the missile itself was pretty dang slow moving, and I just told you at the beginning of the video, I knew nothing about these. You'd think I'd have looked up what the heck they had shot at me, right? I just knew it was a wire-guided missile, and my memory of it was I was super surprised how slow it was and that we had 
a, a relatively large amount of time to dodge it, which is what we did. I don't see where the missile eventually landed. I know I could kind of see it go by the tank somewhat. Uh, it didn't hit us. But we were able to take evasive action to get away from it, which, of course, is the big thing in the game, is everybody seems to be able to get out of the way of this thing. Uh, but in real life, in a real combat situation I was personally involved in, we did the same exact thing. So why I'm in the video complaining about everyone has time to get out of the way, I do not know. Now, I have no idea who fired it, if it came from a vehicle, or if it was uh, one of the 9K111. I really wouldn't have cared at that moment what the heck it was. Uh, you know, whether I could identify that, uh, hey, Commander, that's a 9K111 heading our way. I mean, you don't really care at the time. But looking back at it, uh, it no doubt was <clears throat> one of the series that we're talking about here. It was no doubt between the AT-3 and the AT-5. Somewhere in that series is what was fired at us. It's also a pretty easy assertion to make since the AT-3 series is one of the most heavily produced missiles in the world. It's exported all over the place. It's been upgraded. There's an A, there's a B, there's a C. Then, of course, we get to AT-4s. It's got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I mean, it just goes on and on. So there's a whole bunch of them running around. So if you're in combat in the last... 15 years, 20 years, you're probably going to get shot at by one of these things. You know, the real difference between a lot of these A, B, and C is sometimes uh, the motor that it uses so it travels faster. Sometimes it's a type of warhead like the uh, NM111M, the Factoria AT4C Spigot. So the AT4C Spigot C has a heat round instead of what essentially was an HE round in the, in the previous AT4s. So there's, there's changes like that and some of them are not insignificant. But from a game terms, from armored warfare standpoint, the really important stat, well, of course, the damage and penetration, but, you know, that's something that the that Obsidian can, can manipulate and massage as they need to for game balance. But what really strikes you when you start firing off the AT-3A or AT-3B missiles, assuming that's what we're actually firing out of the BMD-1 currently, what gets you is the flight time, right? And as I said... The flight time when you're new to this, like I was, seems ungodly long, but then when you find out, no, no, that's pretty close to the flight time, but they do list it as 100 meters per second, when actually when you look up the AT3AB, at least the stats that are given it, by and large, the average is 115 to 120 meters per second. No, I have not lost sight of the fact that it's a game, we're not doing some sort of simulation. I, again, I'm amazed what they've got in here already. But if you just want to be straight on it, um, 100 versus 120 meters per second is a big difference in flight time over 600 meters. Maybe not a big difference, but you know, a half a second even, or even a full second shaved off of the current flight time that we're given would give you a significant chance uh, to actually hit the target. Now, when you get good at arcing it, you know, the other thing about the AT3A and AT3B was it was manually controlled all the way. So it also wasn't very good at engaging very close targets because it shoots up off that rail at an angle. The gunner couldn't pick it up to like 500 meters. So it was very poor at close in engagements. And the later AT series, you can get within 70 meters because, you know, it shoots out of that tube. So the, sort of the, the geometry of it is working against the AT3A and B2. So a lot of the players in the game are, you know, complaining about they can't pick up the missile visually. Now, there was a 10 times magnification that the gunner could use in some cases once it got out to very long ranges. And so that we don't have in the game. And maybe that's something they could look at so we could actually track the missile when it's a quite a long shot. In this case, you know, the AT-3A and AT-3B, or the BMD-1's missiles, are not the only missiles in the game. It is one of the first ones you get access to. So again, in that regard, I think the player base sort of this, this education might help you to recognize that there's a, an arc to the tech. So this is the beginning missile. It's, it's hardly, you know, Star Wars-like in its capabilities. And what you see on the screen now is the controller for the uh, man-portable version um, of to guide the missile. There's a pretty similar looking thing inside the actual BMD and BMP that controls it. But this was the, the part that the guy's carrying on his back. But just to show you, it's like, it's pretty cool looking. It looks like a Nintendo joystick, but it's not like it's super complex. So I'm assuming the game, since I haven't gotten to any of the, the higher level missiles or vehicles with the missiles, I'm assuming the game is going to model the, the tech advances of these missiles as we go forward. There's no reason to suspect they won't. Uh, and so just remember, the AT3 series is old school, and they'll get more 
uh, more effective, no doubt, and the flight times especially. The flight times really what I would like to focus on. The flight time to your target should decrease uh, incredibly. So the AT3A is at 115 to 120, and the game's currently modeling at 100 meters per second. The AT4 series, it goes for almost all of them, it averaged 183 meters per second. So I haven't gotten to the AT4, the, the BMD2, and I, I'm going to later today, I'm going to go look at the actual stats, what they show is the meters per second. I understand this is still early access, but I already have an expectation that the game is going to allow the AT4's missile to reach its target in almost half the time. And that would cut down the 6 Mississippi down to 3 Mississippi, and then I don't have to do all this aiming off the target business to sort of keep that warning off the, the player. One of the other big tech things that goes on with these missiles is the AT-3 A and B is on a manual command line of sight. Literally, you manually have to guide it the whole way. You have to track the, the target and the missile and sort of combine the two to get it to reach its destination. Where from, I think, the AT-3C, but certainly by the AT-4s and up, you've got a semi-automatic command line of sight. And this is basically electronic help that's helping you get the missile on target in a much more accurate fashion. The accuracy and the skill required of the AT-3 A and B was immense, famously uh, difficult to uh, get a handle on unless you had extensive training with the AT-3 A and, and AT-3 B, where the semi-automatic... Um, command line of sight incredibly improved the accuracy and reduction in training time it took to make these weapons effective. This video is already going longer than I had planned, but I'm still going to hit you with this. So I don't I don't have a link to show you where I pulled this from the internet, but anyway, this is a quote that I'd like to just read to you quickly. It says, while early estimates of the missile hitting the target, I'm sorry, we're talking about the AT-3 A and B here. Early estimates of the missile hitting the target range from 90% to 60%. Experience has shown that it can drop to an efficiency between 25% and 2% in case of less than optimal conditions and lack of skill from the operator. In fact, the manual command line of sight requires considerable skill on the part of the operator, according to some sources. It takes 2,300 simulated firings to be become proficient with the missile, as well as 50 to 60 simulated firings a week to maintain the skill level. And I think that's what, if I had to guess, based on my hit ratio in the game, that's probably about the right numbers it would take me to actually get and keep good at firing this AT-3A and AT-3B in the game currently. Which is why at one stage I had recommended possibly a test server so we can go in and practice with these missile systems. But I do like the fact that the early missile is very difficult to use, as it was, as that quote shows you. And then the tech should get better, so it becomes easier and easier to operate, utilize them, and then more importantly, hit your target with these things. One other thing to keep in mind about the development of these missiles is the AT-3A and B, these manual versions, were 1970 tech, where the C and D, the AT series, and the uh, AT-4 and 5s, I mean, we're talking 90s and up. So there's a 20-year gap in, in tech uh, time frame. So, you know, you could just imagine better that when you're in the BMD-1, don't expect your AT-3A or B missile to behave like a modern round. And so you can't go into the game thinking, I should just be wrecking stuff with this thing, like I did, and probably like a lot of gamers did when they don't know much about these, these missile systems. Manual, real tough. Now, I think you can make a strong argument that you could really have a lot of fun becoming the best BMD-1P, AT-3A and AT-3B uh, missile guy in all of Armored Warfare. Because at least unless they change the mechanism for this particular missile, it's going to take a lot of practice and there will be a very high skill level that can be obtained possibly given enough time and expertise, whereas once you hit the SACLOS or the semi-automatic versions in the AT-4 and up, again, if the, the game models this, it should be significantly easier. The, the hit rate on the more advanced missiles is reported to be 90% for most operators without this sort of insane training time. So I don't want to, do I want to spend all of my Armored Warfare gaming time getting that AT-3B missile to actually hit something when my HE and heat rounds are so effective? I don't know, it's kind of a fun challenge, but I'll leave that up to you all to decide. But now let's take a look at some actual gameplay with the missiles. You kind of see, at least with the BMD-1's missiles, uh, what we're sort of talking about here and how to... Uh, a few tips and tricks here that you can see. Uh, the the BMD-1, again, uh, I had a lot of fun with. You can see the, the heat and the HE is still by far your preferred we weapon of choice. 
the missiles are still a lot of fun and like I say maybe there's maybe there's a lot of value in getting super good at them you're not limited to the traditional four or five rounds that they carried so that's kind of fun the game gives you plenty of them to play with now it was on a bit of a killing streak this match as well before I even got around to messing with the missiles this was one of the first games that I played where I had actually had the missile loaded in my tank Again, I mentioned this in my other video, but in case you don't know, there's a secondary tab under ammunition where you actually load these missiles. I didn't know that for the first 15 games I played in this thing. But when I get up here on my little ridge, I'm going to shoot some missiles. I'm pretty sure this was early in on my, my BMD-1 gameplay experience, so I'm almost certain this is the AT-3A, not the B. On the, uh, in the game stats, it shows the meters per second as 100 for both. There is no statistical difference in flight time between the two. There's some reports that the AT-3B was a smidge faster uh, than the AT-3A. Oh, look, I'm, I'm still killing stuff. Boy, I was having a ball this game, apparently. I forgot about this. The main benefit to being able to see the distance to the range on your target with the missiles is that if you know they're 400 meters away, so you're looking at four Mississippi before it gets there, you then can aim off of the target, and as it's flying, the distance that the missile is flying also then appears as it's going through the air. So it's, it shows you uh, 100 meters, 200 meters. It keeps flipping very quickly as the missile flies. So if you know it's going to be about 400 meters there, and you've, uh, you've aimed above the guy, then you need to let the missile fly 250 meters or whatever the, 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 uh, the distance might be before you move it down onto the target. And so part of the sort of advanced targeting here is to be aware of your target's distance. Here we go, right here. See, I'm firing right at him. I'm watching the distance. You can see the distance there. Boom! Bye-bye! See ya! You can see how far the target is. Now, at the time I made this video, I had no idea about any of this. I was just firing it and pointing the reticle at him and hoping the heck I hit him. But now when I do it, like here we've lined up another one. This one really curves. I was really surprised I didn't get this guy. Look, see, I missed him. But you can see when the, the, the path of the missile is in flight, how far it is away from you. And that is what really allows you to bend that missile at the appropriate time. You see, I switched right back out of missiles there. <laughs> see, when you want to kill something, you switch back to the actual effective round. The, the velocity is just, I mean, the missile is just so slow. Really, if you're just trying to finish off a guy with low health, I mean, you might get him with the splash damage on the missile, but still, HE and Heatron just so much more effective, as you saw right there. Uh, again, missile's fun, and that's why we're talking about trying to get better at it, but that was a perfect example on that uh, APC. Due to the wonders of modern technology, it's able to slow down me shooting that tank and killing it. So this is a really slow-mo version of uh, the previous shot I showed of, of killing that, that MBT. This I thought might help you see it in slow motion to see what's actually happening here on the screen. Plus, it's just really satisfying for me to watch in slow motion. It's so hard to kill anything with these missiles. It's like, ha ah, ha ha, I got you! I mean, that's how I feel about when I hit someone with these and just hit him with the missile, much less killing him. It's like, ha ah, ha ha, I feel like, party! Yeah, it's like that with these missiles. I hope you found this information like I did. Far less frustrating when you consider that the AT-3 series is not supposed to blow up the world. And it has a really long flight time. I'm looking forward to the future missiles. If they're not already implemented to have a shorter flight time like they should, hopefully they will. So that there are distinct differences between these uh, missile firing systems. We'll no doubt make a part two of the Musashi's Guide to Guided Missiles as I get higher level ones and as the game evolves. So thank you again for watching Let's Play Armored Warfare with Musashi. My name is Musashi and I'll see you again next episode. Don't stop the groove.